So let's say that you're running some kind of facility that produces a lot of waste heat, such as a power station, for example. Now you're going to need some sort of large-scale cooling system that can effectively cool this facility, because otherwise it's going to overheat and catch fire and cause all sorts of issues that you don't want to be dealing with. And so one option that you might consider for cooling is to use one or more cooling towers. Cooling towers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, with the most well-known one being the hyperbolic shaped one, the, the natural draft cooling tower that often appears at big power stations. So just to be clear here, in a cooling tower based system, we're cooling down water. So the cooling tower cools the water, the water then goes into the thing that needs to be cooled, the, the power station for example, it absorbs the heat from that power station, then the hot water goes back into the cooling tower, which cools it back down, and the cold water goes back into the facility. That's the idea. So now let's take a look at how the cooling tower actually manages to cool down this water. It's all based on a very simple principle, which is evaporation. The evaporation of water is a process that needs energy, and this makes perfect sense, because if I'm boiling some water, I can immediately see that the the more the temperature rises, the more water vapour I get. Okay, so the, the higher the temperature of the water becomes, the more it starts to evaporate. In other words, the more energy that I put into it, the more water vapour I get. So clearly evaporation is something that needs energy to happen. But this can also go the other way round. So instead of pumping energy into water to make it evaporate, we can also make it evaporate and therefore suck energy from the environment. And that's how the cooling tower cools down the water. So in basic terms, what we're trying to do in a cooling tower is maximise the evaporation rate. So now the question is, how do we maximise the evaporation rate? Well, in order to know that, we first need to know the factors that determine the evaporation rate. So first of all, the evaporation rate depends on temperature, right? But this factor is constant. This is determined by the temperature of the water that comes from our facility, right? This is always the same, and it would be silly to heat up the water more to make it evaporate faster, right? So temperature is a factor, but we're not going to do anything temperature related because that's just the constant value. The temperature is determined by whatever the power station is doing. Another factor is surface area. The more combined surface area we have, the faster the evaporation goes. If I take a bucket with five litres of water in it, that water will evaporate slower than when I have five buckets with each one litre of water in them, because in that case I've got five times the surface area and therefore the evaporation rate is much, much higher. Another factor that is important is humidity. So the humidity of the surrounding air is important to the evaporation speed. If I take the same 5 litre bucket of water again and I put it in some kind of swamp, the evaporation will go very, very slowly because in that swamp the air is very humid so there is already a lot of water vapour in the air and the evaporation will be slow. Whereas if I put that same bucket now in a desert, the evaporation will be very fast because in a desert it's very dry, so the humidity is low and the water will evaporate fast. So in a cooling tower, we're also trying to minimise the humidity of the air around the water. So those are the two important things that we're trying to do in a cooling tower. Maximise the surface area and minimise the humidity surrounding the water. And that way we get maximum evaporation and therefore maximum cooling. So now let's actually see how that works in reality. Um, so here's a schematic drawing of a cooling tower. So as you can see, the water comes into the tower and is then sprayed around, or well, around, it's, it's sprayed into many, many little droplets using basically a bunch of shower heads. So this is how we maximise the surface area. We just use spraying equipment to spread out the water into millions of tiny droplets and that way we have a lot of surface area combined. So that's the first box is now checked. So now how exactly do we minimise the humidity surrounding these water droplets? Well that's actually very clever. Um, 
say that this is a water droplet well it's actually a very boxy water droplet but just use your imagination for a bit and this this is now a water droplet right now a water droplet always has some little cloud around it of evaporated water right because water is constantly evaporating so there is always a, a small cloud surrounding this droplet um, of water vapor now that means that the evaporation of this of this drop is not that fast because the humidity around this drop is quite high however in our cooling tower as you might remember the droplets are falling down at speed right which means the wind is blowing away this cloud it's constantly removing the water vapor away from the drop which means the evaporation goes very fast because the air around this drop is no longer humid it's very dry so the evaporation goes very very fast and that is how we also check the second box so now we have maximized the surface area and we've minimized the humidity around the water droplets and therefore we've maximized the evaporation rate and so a lot of water will now evaporate inside the cooling tower and the water vapor will then exit the tower at the top the cold water reaches the bottom of the tower and is then pumped back into whatever we're trying to cool now of course we are evaporating a part of the water right a certain percentage of the water evaporates in this process so we do need to keep refilling the system it's not a completely closed loop so we do need some kind of water source such as a river or a lake but we don't need to use that much water because the biggest part is being reused also some cooling towers use fans to accelerate the airflow from bottom to top to create even more wind blowing along along these droplets to get an even lower relative humidity um, and other cooling towers so the bigger ones that have the hyperbolic shape are so-called natural draft towers so in those towers there is also an airflow from bottom to top but this is a natural airflow that is caused by the pressure difference inside and outside the tower so in this case no fans are being used all right then so now you know exactly the next time you know when you're driving past one of these power stations you know exactly what's going on inside one of these big concrete towers i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and of course thank you for watching